Slide 1. Welcome to Networking and Health Information Exchange, Privacy, Confidentiality, and Security Issues and Standards. This is Lecture A. This component, Networking and Health Information Exchange, addresses what is required to accomplish networking across and among disparate organizations that have heterogeneous systems. It is an in-depth analysis of data mobility, including the hardware infrastructure, wires, wireless, and devices supporting them, the ISO stack, standards, internet protocols, federations and grids, the NHIN, and other nationwide approaches. Slide 2. Objectives for this unit privacy, confidentiality, and security issues and standards are to explain the concepts of privacy and confidentiality requirements and policies and learn how to implement the requirements. Describe how to secure data storage and transmission using data encryption, signatures, validation, non-repudiation, and integrity, PKI, certificates, and security protocols. Define access control methods. Analyze access restrictions to data storage and retrieval, physical and software. Slide 3. Security is defined by the Merriam-Webster Dictionary as the quality or state of being secure, freedom from danger, freedom from fear or anxiety, and measures taken to guard against espionage or sabotage, crime, attack, or escape. Slide 4. Information security is protecting information and information systems, including computers, computing devices, and networks, from unauthorized access, unauthorized use, unauthorized alterations, unauthorized interruptions, and devastation. Slide 5. There are five key concepts to understand when talking about information security. They are confidentiality, integrity, availability, accountability, and non-repudiation. Confidentiality, integrity, and availability are commonly referred to as the CIA of security. Slide 6. Confidentiality is making sure that only authorized individuals have access to information. For example, in a doctor's office, a nurse may have access to a patient's records which contain the patient's age, weight, past and present medical conditions, and medications the individual is taking. The receptionist in the doctor's office should not have access to that information. She does not need any of that information to do her job, for example, scheduling an appointment for the patient. Confidentiality is also making sure that individuals with that access keep the information private and do not share with others. The nurse is not allowed to share any of the information in the patient's medical record or anything that is said or done during the appointment with the receptionist or any other individual. That information must be kept private. There are federal and state laws in place to protect patient confidentiality and to punish those who abuse confidentiality. Slide 7. One of those federal laws is the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, HIPAA, of 1996. It protects health insurance coverage for workers and their families when they change or lose their jobs and requires the establishment of national standards for electronic health care transactions and national identifiers for providers, health insurance plans, and employers. Slide 8. It also addresses the security and privacy of health data and encourages the widespread use of electronic data interchange, EDI, in the U.S. health care system. HIPAA gives you rights over your health information and sets rules and limits on who can look at and receive your health information. The rules apply to all forms of individuals protected health information, whether electronic, written, or oral. Slide 9. Integrity means that the data on a system is the same as the data from the original source. The data has not been altered or destroyed. 
For example, if a nurse writes in a patient's chart that a child weighs 15 pounds, but when putting it in the computer they accidentally enter 25 pounds, the integrity of the data has been compromised. The data was altered. This could have a significant effect on the patient's treatment. The 10 pound difference could make a difference in a dosage of medicine. Slide 10. A tool that can be used to ensure the integrity of data is encryption. Encryption is the process of taking data, referred to as plain text, and applying an encryption algorithm called cipher to create ciphertext. This ciphertext is unreadable by anyone that intercepts the data as it is being transferred. In order to decrypt the data, a receiver must have the same cipher and the key that was used to encrypt the data. Slide 11. For a simple example of encryption, let's use a cipher that would use the characters of the alphabet but would shift the characters a specific number, x, to the left or right, y. The x and y values are called keys. Lots of people could use the same algorithm or cipher of shifting characters of the alphabet, but what would make each specific cipher different is the number of characters we shift and in which direction we shift them. If we chose to shift all characters three to the right, the plain text of hospital would be encrypted to KRVSLWDO. If anyone intercepted this data, he would not know what it was. If we shifted four characters to the left, then hospital would be encrypted as DKOLEPWH. The same cipher with different keys will create different ciphertext. Slide 12. The example on the previous slide was an example of symmetric encryption. The same key was used to encrypt and decrypt. Symmetric encryption is also referred to as shared key encryption. Asymmetric key encryption uses two keys, one to encrypt the data and another to decrypt. Typically, the key to encrypt, called the public key, is made available so that anyone can send an encrypted message to the receiver. The receiver is the only one with the private key that is used to decrypt the cipher text. Slide 13. A hash or hash value is a number that is generated based on the data that is being sent. If there is any alteration to the data, then the hash value will change. A sender runs a program to create a hash value and encrypts the hash value along with the data and sends it to the receiver. The receiver unencrypts the data and hash, creates a hash value for the received data and should receive the same hash value as the sender. If not, the data has been altered in some way. Its integrity has been compromised. Slide 14. Availability means that the system or data is available when needed. If someone defaces a website, that website is no longer available. While a user could still access the page, the page's integrity has been compromised and the information they want to receive from that site is no longer available. Availability is important in a patient's care. For example, if a patient comes into the ER, it is important that the physician can very quickly obtain his medical records so that the physician has all the information needed to treat the patient. One thing that can be done to help ensure availability is to create fault-tolerant systems and infrastructures. Fault-tolerant computer systems would be ones that have redundant components such as fans, processors, or RAID, redundant array of inexpensive disks. If one component fails, the other one still remains so that the system doesn't stop working. The Internet is an excellent example of fault-tolerant infrastructures. There are multiple pathways between different networks on the Internet. From your school's network or LAN, local area network, and the server that hosts www.amazon.com, there are multiple routes or paths data can take. If one route goes down, another route will automatically be taken. 
Denial of service, DOS attacks, can make systems unavailable. DOS attacks are when a target system is so busy responding to bogus requests from other systems that it is unable to perform the work it is supposed to do. For example, many machines can ping www.amazon.com at the same time, and the server for Amazon would be so busy responding to those pings that it could not respond to users' searches for books on Amazon. The system itself is not down, but is unavailable to do the job it is supposed to do. Slide 15. Accountability is the process of holding a person or entity responsible for his actions. In order to have accountability, a system must identify users and maintain an audit trail of actions. For example, if someone has access to drugs at the hospital, there has to be a way to see who accessed the drugs and what he did. We need to know that Nurse Betty opened the medicine cabinet at 9.30 p.m. on September 20, 2010, and took Vicodin to give to patient Al Jones. We also need to go back and make sure that the doctor actually prescribed the Vicodin for Al Jones. Slide 16. Non-repudiation provides proof that a certain action has taken place, or that something or someone is what it claims to be. If I want to know who you are, I will ask you for a driver's license. I believe that my state's driver's license bureau uses enough security measures and checks to make sure that an individual is who he says he is before the license bureau gives him a license. So therefore, I trust the license and will use it as a form of ID. However, I don't believe that your local library puts you through a thorough check before issuing you a library card so I will not accept a library card as proof of identity. In information systems, the way we identify the origin of data is through a digital signature. Digital signatures are created by using private key encryption. Only the originator has the key, so the data couldn't have been created by anyone else. Return receipts are used for delivery of data. They ensure that the data is delivered to the intended recipient. Non-repudiation stops someone from saying that he didn't do that or he didn't receive information. There are other methods that can be used for non-repudiation. For example, let's go back to Nurse Betty and the medicine cabinet. Let's say that in order for Nurse Betty to access the drug cabinet, she must do a fingerprint scan. There is no way that Betty can deny that she was the one that accessed the cabinet because she is the only one who has that fingerprint. Slide 17. Public Key Infrastructure, PKI, is the hardware, software, and procedures needed to manage certificates. Certificates are used to bind a public key with a person, an organization, his address, contact information, and other relevant information. Certificates are used to verify the identity of the source. Certificates are issued by Certificate Authorities, CA. Before a source receives a certificate, it must undergo a review process by a Registration Authority, RA. The Registration Authority investigates the source and makes sure that it is who it says it is. It's kind of like a background check. Once the source has been verified by the RA, the RA will let the CA know that it is okay to issue a certificate to the source. The certificate is valid for a given period of time, and after that time, a source must apply for a new certificate. If a source's key has been compromised, then the certificate can be revoked. The certificate would be placed on a Certificate Revocation List CRL. If a certificate has expired or is on the CRL, web browsers and other software would provide a warning message to the user before allowing a web page to be viewed or software delivered. Slide 18. In a web browser, you will know there is a certificate when the URL has HTTPS instead of HTTP. HTTPS uses SSL, Secure Socket Layer, which means that the information being transmitted between the website and the client system is being encrypted. 
Web browsers will also show a lock in the lower right hand corner. This is a web page for eBay. Notice the HTTPS in the URL. Slide 19. You can click on the lock in the lower right hand corner and see information about the certificate. This certificate was issued to eBay by VeriSign Incorporated. VeriSign is a leading CA. In the second graphic, you will notice that this certificate was issued on January 7, 2009 and will expire on January 23, 2011. So eBay will need to get a new certificate in January of 2011. Slide 20. This concludes Lecture A of Privacy, Confidentiality, and Security Issues and Standards. We've covered concepts of privacy and confidentiality and how to secure data.